My name is Paul Shelley, and welcome to The Astro Historian. This is a channel dedicated to exploring and explaining the lore of sci-fi and space universes and discussing their impact. Today we'll be giving some context to the latest trailer for Squadron 42 to help you understand what you're seeing in-game. Before we get into that, I want to let you know I've been covering the lore of Squadron 42 through its sister game, Star Citizen, for almost six years now, with a lot of topics that might interest you if you want to know a little bit more about the game's setting 900 years in the future. So if you haven't subscribed, then be sure to hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to be stay up to date on the latest videos. If you want to go that extra mile, we also have YouTube memberships and Ko-fi for financial donations. Lastly, if you want early, ad-free access to these videos, consider joining the Patreon as well. All those links are in the description. Now, to start off, please take note that I will not be spoiling anything that isn't publicly available and meant to be publicly available, so no leaks related. A lot of this information has been available in the lore for several years now and will hopefully put the story of Squadron 42 into perspective. I will also not be doing a shot-for-shot -shot breakdown of this, though I can if people want me to. Please let me know in the comments below. Finally, I will mainly focus on the scenes dealing with the Battle of Vega 2 in this trailer, as there are a lot of lore packed into this trailer, which will take more time to thoroughly comb through and put into context. Before we can really start, I will give a brief context for the universe the game takes place in for those who may not be familiar. It is the year 2945, and most of humanity lives under the reformed dictatorship turned democracy known as the United Empire of Earth. We are beset by aliens on all of our borders, some being mostly friendly and mercantile like the Banu, others being standoffish and clandestine like the Xi'an, and still others openly hostile and warlike like the since-conquered Empire of the Tavarin and the still actively raiding and invading Van Duel. You play as a UEE Starman, a member of the naval forces of the UEE, as you work your way up to becoming a pilot of a space fighter, and fight everything from fringe human outlaws to the vicious Vanduul Raiders. With that said, let's take a look at the video. This first scene is almost certainly the start of the game, and the date on screen is that of the history-changing Battle of Vega 2. The conversations we're hearing are mostly patrols, likely looking for a Vanduul incursion into the system, and the defending fleet is in orbit around Vega 2. Those bagpipes get me every time. The fleet is the second fleet, one of the most famous fleets in the UEE, partially because it is commanded by Admiral Ernst Bishop. He is an admiral who is beloved by those who serve under him and also hailed as a tactical genius. Some go so far as to call him one of the best commanders in history and the 30th century version of Alexander the Great. His flagship is the RSI Bengal-class supercarrier named the UES Krugeri. Bengals are named after Earth cats, with the Krugeri being a type of African lion. It is also home to the most famous squadron of the UEE Navy, the 42nd Squadron, aka Squadron 42, the name of the game. Squadron 42 has been home to the best of the best fighter and bomber crews in the entire empire for more than three centuries and has a legendary reputation for being able to succeed despite impossible odds. Because of both of these facts, the Second Fleet spends a lot of time near Vanduul space, as it is the most pressing and dangerous areas that needs to be defended. This explains why the Second Fleet is in Vega. The crossroads into the Vanduul held red systems, former human colonies now under Vanduul control. We can see several capital ships we haven't seen before that look like Bengals but smaller. One looks to be some kind of smaller carrier, while the other has large ship turret batteries on them, likely some kind of cruiser. In later scenes, we see the names for two of these cruiser-type ships, the UEES Corvus and the UEES Integrity. The latter ship, the Integrity, actually has references in lore as a cruiser, which was the star of a 45-minute propaganda film to boost public support for the conflict with the Van Duel and increase recruitment. So, it's likely a cruiser. 
I won't venture too much into speculation here as this video is already going to be pretty long. I will do another video looking at these two ship types and guess what their lore might be for those who are interested. Make sure to subscribe and keep an eye out for those videos when they come out. The ship we push in on is an Aegis-class destroyer, the UEES Gauntlet. These ships are all named after ancient weapons of humanity, with some notable ones that can be seen in Star Citizen being the active UEES Warhammer and the crashed UEES Flysa on Crusader's Moon of Daymar. The Javelin was first built in 2690, a little under 300 years before the events of Vega, with the Gauntlet likely being a newer Flight 3, which began being produced in 2820, a little over a century before. Javelins are designed to be modular, as they're able to swap out modules in the field to adapt to roles such as Command and Control, Convoy Raider, Planetary Bombardment, and many more. But if you want to know more in depth about these ships, please check out my complete video on the Javelin class in the top right or in the description below. This leads us to the next part of the video as we get an up close and personal look at the player character in different variations. Our character is writing a letter to their mother describing the situation. Personally, I love this as it gives you context without lore dumping, but still gives you subtle emotions of what the player is going through. Having detected Van Duel near the jump point into Vega, the character is very much writing a letter which could be their last, and the gravity and confusion is very much evident in the dialogue. This concern isn't without merit, either. Every single UEE system that has had contact with the Van Duel has eventually fallen, and fallen brutally. Additionally, the speed at which that fall happens has increased to a matter of days as the Vanduul get more experience with humanity. If you want to know more about the history of the human conflict with the Vanduul, I did a summary of the several centuries of raids and invasions in the top right and, of course, in the description. So, everyone in Vega has known for centuries that it was just a matter of time before a large enough group will arrive and crush the system. If the reports are right, then we are right in the path of an apocalyptic event. Being a gunner on a Javelin destroyer means that you will also be one of the first to get up close and personal with the Van Duel when the attack comes. Thus, the seriousness of the letter, one written so soon after another, which our character has hastily written as a means to tell our mother the situation. Taking a step back, we also see the few snippets of the lore from the display itself. First of all, the holographic projection is called a Mobiglass, a wrist-mounted device similar to a smartphone with infinitely better battery life and ruggedized to function in multiple environments. It's built by Microtech, a company who owns their own planet in the Stanton system, a planet you can actually visit in Star Citizen and land at the city which Microtech built to be their corporate and planetary capital, New Babbage. In the messages, we can see at the top being from Voyager Direct, now, this is the UEE equivalent of Amazon or Wish or Alibaba, an online store which specializes in selling just about everything and shipping it to remote parts of space. The next talks about the Polo Initiative. Now, this was an attempt to cut military spending by 10% across the board and redirect those funds to help rebuild civilian infrastructure needs and improve equipment and training for local police officers across the Empire, uh, an initiative that the military was not too fond of. The next is spam from the Central Core Bank offering loan opportunities. The CCB is responsible for the creation of the currency of the UEE, the United Earth Credit, or UEC, as well as regulating banking activities all over the Empire. The next is confirmation that the character had sent an application to join the UEE Flight Academy, which is difficult to get into, as most Navy pilots get in right after their basic training at the UEE Naval Training Camps known as Forges and to get in afterwards requires some skill and demonstration to prove that you are worthy of the title of pilot. The last message in the Moby Glass is an update on the Satabal Professional League, or SBPL. Satabal is a popular sport in the UEE, played by amateurs and professionals alike, and the SBPL is one of the most popular professional sports leagues in the UEE. After our character finishes writing their letter, we can see they don't seem to send it, though it could be just an animation that wasn't added yet. Once the Moby Glass closes, we see the arrival of the Captain of the Gauntlet, Rachel McLaren. In her conversation with the character, she explains she knows what we are doing, because she used to do the same thing. Now, she says she used to do this on the flight deck, which this obviously isn't, but I believe she's referring to herself sneaking away to watch fighters launch on her ship, 
likely an Idris-class frigate. The point being that she is sympathizing with what you are doing, watching the fleet and the various patrols flying by. You exchange dialogue with the captain, talking about the latest generation of UEE fighters, the Anvil Aerospace F-8 Lightning, as we see a few flying by. These are ships designed specifically to combat the Vanduul threat, being the culmination of centuries of development in how to counter their unique combat style. I actually recently did a video on the development of the F-8, which I'll leave in the top right and, of course, in the description as well if you're interested. The captain is called away but stops and tells you she found out about your application to the Flight Academy again, meaning this isn't the first time she has seen us attempt to get in. She then gives the player encouragement to keep trying if we don't make it in, as it took her several times before she got accepted. This is such a subtle conversation, but as you can tell, they aren't talking about the Van Duel, but instead a shared interest and even hope for the future. They're focusing on the future as a means to not focus on their current, very precarious situation. The next scene which takes place during the Battle of Vega is the scene with Admiral Bishop making his I Held the Line speech to the fleet from the bridge of the Krugeri. He remarks about a recon team before having the fleet move out, away from Vega 2. We know from other lore that Bishop had the second fleet mass near the Vega Virgil jump point, likely to cut off the approaching Van Duel. Finally, the second fleet looks to be at, if not close to, full strength, which is very unusual. Most fleets are broken up into battle groups, which spread out to protect multiple systems. However, with Vega always being next on the list of UEE systems to be attacked by the Van Duel, it makes sense to keep a full-strength fleet stationed nearby. The last scene which likely takes place during the Battle of Vega is our first proper look at the Van Duel in this trailer. The three Van Duel are exiting a Van Duel boarding pod called a Cleaver. One, who is likely the leader of this group, raises their spear weapon and makes a declaration in Van Duel. One, my friend Jail, managed to get an official translation of From the Debs. The game has several alien languages which have been created for it, two of which have full 190-plus page documents on how to read and speak them. Sadly, Vanduul isn't one of those languages yet, but there are plenty of language nerds in the community who've been trying to decipher some of it. But according to Jail, this Vanduul is making a pronouncement which goes something along the lines of I rise, I take, I ascend. I would venture to guess this is some kind of Vanduul cultural or traditional statement issued before a fight, as it was compared to the famous words of Julius Caesar, I came, I saw, I conquered. Again, if you want to know more about the culture and the history of the Vanduul, check out the video I did on their conflict with humanity in the top right. Hopefully this video illustrates the incredible world building the writers at Cloud Imperium Games had done with this universe. Just about Anything and everything in the game has some kind of in-universe justification, if not a full-blown backstory. If this does well, I'll break down the other characters and lore bits from the rest of the trailer, most of which takes place aboard the Aegis Idris frigate, the UEES Stanton, in the Odin system. Let me know in the comments below if that interests you. I'd like to thank you for watching, and I'd like to thank those on screen now for supporting the channel financially. If you want to throw in a few credits, Think about becoming a member on YouTube, and if you want a bit more for your contribution, join the Patreon. Patreons get early, ad-free access to all videos, including the exclusive early access to my long-running complete history of Star Citizen lore series. Check those out now in the top right if you want to know what you're getting. Now, I want to hear your thoughts on this and any other lore topics in the comments below. And as always, remember, Exhistoria Ad Astra.